This week we're going to look at strands in um, in Bifrost. Um, this is an image I made a couple of months ago now when I was just start, first started playing around with them. Um, so we've got strands here. So basically strands are uh, lines really, but they can be manipulated with and so like curves or a bit like end hair. Um, but they render really quickly and you can have lots of them and they render quite well. Um, so I've got in here, this is a NPM uh, fiber simulation of strands, which I'll go through later. Um, and this m sort of matte thing I put them on or tablecloth type thing isn't a texture, it's actually, if we zoom in, it's millions and millions of strands it's not probably not millions, but it might be actually. So we've got this sort of knit underneath, you can see here. Um, and then I've got strands coming off them to sort of add more sort of textured detail. But they're still rendered. I, don't know, I think they rendered in about a minute, I think. This, or maybe it might have been a bit longer because I've got this glass bowl in it, which probably slowed it all down. But they generate really quickly and you can render them really quickly. They're really lightweight, computationally speaking. Um, so they're pretty good to use. Let's have a look at how we make them. So what I'm gonna do is uh, just to sort of show some of the basic settings, I'm just gonna make a single strand. Um, and how I'm gonna go about that is, strands are basically generated on point positions. Um, so I'm gonna make a series of point positions which I'm gonna sort of then make a strand out of. So we don't need to do anything in the viewport, we can make it all in the graph. So I made a new graph, gonna delete the input, and I'm going to do a thing where I'm just going to make some point positions in here, which I'll then generate the strand from. So how we go about that is we can use a node called sequence array. And a sequence array will basically just make a list of numbers for us. Um, so we have these three settings. We have a size and a start and a step. The size is how many numbers we want, so I'm going to have 20. Uh, the start is where the sort of list of numbers will start at, so it's going to start at zero. And the step is going to be how big the step is each time round. So basically what you, what's going to happen here, if I did this, it would make, it would make a list of numbers starting from zero with a step of one, and it would do it 20 times. So it would basically go from zero to would be a list of zero to actually 19 because it counts zero as a number. So I want to do that, but I want to make it in point positions. So I need an X, Y, and Z. So I need to change this value no input to a float three like that. And I need to change that one as well to a float three like so. So I'm going to make 20 numbers, I'm going to start at zero and I'm going to move them all one up incrementally in the Y. So that's X, Y, and Z. So just to sort of give you a visualization of that, if I do construct points, and plug that in there, point positions, plug that in there, you can see we get these tiny little points. And you can see they are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, blah, 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 and on and on to that one at the top. Right, so delete that, don't need that anymore. So to make a strand, we can do the same as we just did with points. We can just do tab, construct, strands. And it has two inputs, point position and a strand offset. And we'll talk about the strand offset in a bit. That's, um, yeah, so I'm just going to make, put the point positions in there. Link that to the thingy, and there we go, we get a strand. So that is a strand made out of these 20 points. Um, I could do two points and make that 20 and that would just have one and one there um, but if you try to bend it and deform it it wouldn't really deform so you need um, you know some points in there to give it sort of the ability to deform so that's that so think of those as sort of little joints as it were or points on a curve, basically. That makes it easier, doesn't it? So, we made a strand. Let's see what happens when we try and render it. 
Uh, let's make a floor plane. Going to make an Arnold light. Let's make a sky dome. Uh, just like that. Attribute editor. Make it visible to the camera so we don't get all that white in the scene. Uh, I'm just going to change my render settings to 1K just so it's a bit squarer so we can see it. Let's click on that. There we go. So I'm going to see that. Right. Open up the render view. Oops, one from before. Hit render. Don't get anything. There's nothing there. So if I zoom out, no strands to be seen. Um, and that's because it doesn't have any shape defined to it yet. Um, it's just basically a numerical sort of point in space type thing. So we need to give it a shape. So we go, so that Arnold can read it. So we're going to go um, set. Um, what you can do is, it's called set strand shape. Set, set, <laughs> set strand shape. So if I do SSS, it should come up there. There we go. Uh, I'll plug that in now, and then plug that in, and hit play. We get that. There we go. So there is our strand. Um, and you can see we've got some settings here. Let's just move that over so we can see it when I'm rendering. Um, got ribbon, wire. Wire just defaults to ribbon. Um, I think this is because Maya's, it's using Maya's curve rendering, not Maya's Arnold's curve rendering, which only does ribbon or tube. So it just does defaults to ribbon when you put wire in. If you do tube, you can sort of see you get more of a cylinder type shape. So zoom in there. You can see it's got a roundness. If you turn off screen aligned, it will then just default back to a ribbon again, just to sort of clarify that. So, and then we can change the size. So I'll make it 0.1, make it 1, there we go, 0.25. So that's that. Um, we can also change the shape of the strand, as in how thick it is from top to bottom. Um, and we use a thing called, if I type in profile, uh, set strand size profile. Plug that in. Oops, plug that in. And you can see already it went from thick to thinner at the top. And the settings on this are we have a multiplier that will multiply it up. And we have this profile curve that we can change. So you can see the bottom at zero is a one, and then the top here is a 0.35. So the value of that is 0.35. Do three zero. Go to a little sharp point, um, and we can play around with these curves. As you can see, we can get odd things like that, and you can do that. Get some weird little shapes. Um, put another one in there, move that up, and move that one down. Anyway, so you can play around with the profile. Uh, you can go in, if you start messing these up, you can just click delete to delete them if you want one selected. Or you can go up here and do some presets, so I could set that back to doing a sort of point. Let's move that point two again. There we go, and I'm just going to change that multiplier back to point two five, actually. Um, one point five, something like that. Right, so that's make strand, set the shape, change the profile. Um, let's assign a material. So we'll do the usual assign material, plug that into the geometry, plug that back into there. We just need to give it a material to look at. So I'm just going to open up the hyper shade. Um, if I clear that out. Um, I've just really simplified my hypershade and got rid of all the other windows apart from the workspace one. And I'm just going to go tab, AI standard hair. So you can put a hair on it, which is good. But you can also put other, any other material you want on it, but the good thing about the hair is you get the sort of properties of hair. So I'm going to put that into surface material. I'll go all dark. With that selected, if I open up my attribute editor, 
bring down the melon a bit, and there we go. So you can put a hair shade on it, which is quite cool. Um, let's minimize that. So, done that. We also have um, some Arnold specific settings. So, if I do Arnold set Arnold strand settings, go there, plug that in. No real change. Um, they're all set to the default, so what's being fed into them at the moment, they're just using. You can change again from ribbon to thick. Orientated them, not 100% sure what that does. Um, but, you know, thick is basically tube. And ribbon is like the ribbon. And the default will be whatever it was coming through, which is tube. Um, and we've got a minimum, minimum, minimal min pixel width, which is, you know, if it's less than a pixel, you can make it a pixel so you don't get them disappearing or flicking on and off as well. Um, Bifrost strands do not currently have a min pixel width, but this may change in the future, such as, all oh, right, so it doesn't work at the moment anyway. So you can ignore that one. Um, and the other good thing on here is you can, if you've got sort of jaggedy ones, I mean, I could do that actually now. Let's do. Uh, can I do that? No, I'll do that later. Um, you know, if it was like a jaggedy line that you were making, you've got some, uh, we can interpret them. So we can be spline or cat model, it will smooth them out. Um, won't notice it here because it's a straight line. So that's the sort of basic strand settings. Um, let's now have a look at some of the things we can do to strands other than just sort of this basic setup.